Hey, this is Andrew Brown. Let's talk about the SageMaker Python SDK. This is a library for training and deploying ML models on SageMaker. How is it different from Boto 3? Well, Boto 3 broadly interacts with AWS services, while the SageMaker Python SDK has integrations with SageMaker and specific machine learning tools. Uh, so here we have ML frameworks like MXNext, TensorFlow, Chainer, PyTorch, Scikit, and more. For ML algorithms, we've got XGBoost, SageMaker features, it has reinforcement learning estimators, it has integrations for Spark ML serving, it has built-in algorithm estimators, uh, you know, more algorithm estimators, <laughs> consuming SageMaker model packages, bring your own Docker containers with SageMaker estimators, SageMaker automatic model tuning, which we do talk about somewhere else, SageMaker batch transform, inference pipelines, which, yeah, they still exist, SageMaker operators in Apache Airflow, SageMaker Autopilot, SageMaker model monitoring, SageMaker debugger, SageMaker processing. I'm sure more, there's probably more. Um, for tools, we have bring your own models, secure training and inference with VPCs. So to install it, it's a, you know, it's a library. You just go ahead and install that. Uh, it provides several high level abstractions for working with SageMaker. So we have estimators that uh, encapsulate training on uh, a SageMaker. An estimator is an equation for picking the best ML model based on training, evaluation, prediction, export for serving. We have models. This encapsulate, encapsulates built ML models. We have predictors provide real-time inference and transformation using Python data types against SageMaker endpoints. We have sessions that provides a collection of methods for working with SageMaker resources. Transformers encapsulates batch transform jobs for inference on SageMaker processes, encapsulates running processing jobs for data processing on SageMaker. Let's talk about uh, training scripts. So to train a model using SageMaker Python SDK, you prepare a training script. Um, and I'm starting to remember this now, as it's been a while since I built a model, but yeah, you'd have a, a training script, you'd create the estimator, you'd call the fit method for the estimator, okay? And the arguments are gonna vary based on your model, so it's you know, different models have different parameters or different arguments, and your training code is gonna go here. So, you know, for the most part, it's gonna follow that pattern, but you have to create that training script. So training script needs parameters. So uh, we have SM model DIR. This is a string that represents the path where the training job writes the model to artifacts to. After training, artifacts in this directory are uploaded to S3 for model hosting. We have SM num GPUs. This is an integer representing the number of GPUs available to the host. We have SM channel, a bunch of whatever on the end there, a string that represents the path to the directory that contains the input data for specified channel. For example, if you specify two input channels in the MXNest estimators, name train and test the environment uh, variables are going to be set, okay? We have SM HPS. This is a JSON dump of hyperparameters preserving JSON, okay? So to train a model by using SageMaker Python, you prepare your training script, as we said earlier. Notice we, we have MXNet. Net. I don't like this framework, but it was something that was often promoted by uh, AWS. But you know, these days, I think a lot of people are floating towards PyTorch for whatever reason. But anyway, here you see that we are creating, uh, we have our, um, yeah, yeah. So we prepare our training script. We create our estimator here, uh, and we call fit for the method of the estimator, all right? Uh, SageMaker Python SDK supports local mode, which allows you to create estimators and deploy them to your local environment. Local mo mode supports the following framework images. So TensorFlow, MXNet, Chainer, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, or use your own custom images, okay? Uh, test your deep learning scripts before running them in SageMaker managed training or environment hosting or hosting environments. So here you can see this. I tried getting this to work. I never could get local mode to work exactly, but it is there, and so supposedly you can utilize it. There are two ways to configure local mode, globally, obviously, or locally. If you use local code, you cannot use the dependency parameter in your estimator or your model. And then we have our local session, so there is the example there. Even when you configure a local session with local code, you still need to have AWS credentials so you can send it to S3. Even if you don't want to use S3, you still need to have AWS credentials. You may need to even set environment variable credentials. You will have to install Docker Compose to use local mode. Local mode is experimental on Windows. Uh, I don't know the state of it now. It might be less experimental, but you know, I'm not sure who's making uh, running models on Windows these days, unless it's in WSL. So usually you're in a Linux environment anyway. So here we have ensure to train uh, an instance locally. So here's an example with TensorFlow. Okay, 
talk about sessions for a moment. SageMaker Session provides convenient methods for manipulating entities and resources that uh, Amazon SageMaker uses, such as train jobs, endpoints, and input data. Notable ones is upload data, upload string as a file body, download data, read S3 files, list S3 files, default bucket. There's an example of default bucket. Train, updating training job, process, auto ML, compile model, tune or create tuning job, create model, create endpoint. But the idea is that these are just convenient methods that come with it that make it really easy. So you don't have to write Boto 3 code for this, okay? Um, the training, the source of training data can be inputted from various locations. For training source data, you can pass in from your S3 path, mount from EFS or FS, FSX Luster. Might even have more options in the EFS space now, I'm not sure. Uh, and so here's an example of us mounting EFS, if you can see that. We have training channels. So when you're training, you can partition your training data into different logical channels. Depending on your problem, some common channel ideas are training, testing, evaluation, images, and labels. And so see there is a train parameter for our channel. And there you go, okay?